All right, here we are again with uh, another Saturday Night Live with a very special guest, uh, Adrian. How you doing, Adrian? I'm doing great. Hi. Hello. <laughs> it's it's great to, to be here. Pleasure to meet you, finally. And uh, so, uh, where are you from? What area? Well, I was uh, raised and grew up in the Washington, D.C. area. And, uh, but then I traveled a lot, so I, it's hard to say exactly where I'm from. And I lived in California for the past five years and around LA. And, but now I just moved to Sedona uh, about two months ago. Okay. So that's where I live now. <laughs> so you've been around a little, is that your family moved around when you, when you were uh, little? No, no, we stayed in the one place in the Washington, D.C. area. It was me when I was young. I started really young, um, 18, 19. I lived in Europe for five years. And uh, I lived in New York, up, upstate New York for a few years. And <clears throat> then I went back to Europe for a little bit <laughs> again. And uh, yeah, so I've just been all over. I love to travel. Nice. <laughs> So uh, what, uh, what has brought you to MasterFast? Uh, maybe you want to explain a little bit of like, uh, yeah, your background, your diet, how you grew up on your diet and so on and so forth, and then how you came to uh, a healthier lifestyle, how you found MasterFast, stuff like that. Yeah, so I'll start with my growing up situation. Um, basically, my diet was typical American diet, but um, my mother... Um, who is a school teacher, uh, she was never keen on letting us eat uh, fast food or junk food. So actually we, we didn't eat, my brother and I, uh, he's a couple years younger than me, we didn't eat a lot of uh, junk food or fast food. She always cooked. We, I came from a family of women that always cooked. And my grandmothers, both my grandmothers always had a in the backyard. So there was always fresh greens and um, vegetables and uh, there was always regular visits to the farmers markets for you know fruits and vegetables. So um, I would say I had a diet that was slightly better than the average American uh, because of that. Um, so I never had that habit of eating junk food. Uh, but still, we ate all of the typical American foods like meat and um, potatoes and bread, pasta. So, and those are the things that my body doesn't do well on. <laughs> so, uh, I, but I never had uh, too many health problems growing up. The only issue that I did have was the, um, with uh, female issues, reproductive issues. I, I actually had a really bad time with that. Um, what, when did that start? As soon as I started, around 13 years old. Oh, wow. I started menstruation, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so there was always terrible pain and cramping and uh, ovarian cysts, uh, that sort of thing on and off, uh, a lot of suffering in that area from the beginning. Um, I, as it turned out, after many years, um, I ended up getting, or I was diagnosed with endometriosis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, of course, now I know that it was all about, uh, you know, stagnant lymphatic lymph that was collecting in a particular area. But I tried all kinds of alternative medicines because the doctors, of course, didn't have any uh, remedy for me. There was only the increasing amounts of pain medicine um, to the point where it was almost dangerous. I mean, because I was a teenager and they were giving me narcotics it was not a good idea. Thankfully, I didn't have any real issues with that. Um, but I knew that it wasn't good to take the narcotics, so I wouldn't take them. So I was trying to find all different sorts of alternative ways of dealing with it. I, uh, when I was in Europe at one point, I got acupuncture, and that really saved me from a lot of suffering. It didn't cure the problem, but it saved me from a lot of pain. Yeah, it's um, the energy moving. Right, right. So I was grateful for that. Um, but... Uh, Eventually, I did have to have surgery because of the uh, endometrial tissue was starting to uh, attach to different organs of my body. And so, um, and the, still the doctors had no remedy. The only thing that they would suggest is either, either the increasing amounts of pain medicine or 
um, birth control, they recommended. And um, I knew that neither of those were the answer, so I didn't do it. But so then they said the only other option would be to have a hysterectomy, of course. Um, and I refused that also because um, by this time I was only like uh, 30 years old and I still, you know, was too young to, I knew there had to be another way. Um, I, but I didn't mention though that in the meantime, the reason they were threatening me with the, the uh, hysterectomy was because I had to have surgery because there was a large obstruction in the um, upper part of my colon. So I actually did have to have surgery to, uh, you know, remove the obstruction, which, um, so I lost about one foot of my colon in that surgery. So um, that, you know, has caused me to be a lot more motivated to keep myself healthy. So that's, you know, in the end, it's a good thing. We learn from all these things, right? Mm -hmm. That was at 30 years old, the surgery? Yes, yes. Uh, did you have any children? No, I, I have intentionally chosen not to have children. I never intended to have children. So it wasn't, a, that wasn't a question for me, but I knew that um, uh, the uterus uh, on the woman's body is very important. To, if you lose it, then it, it causes all sorts of problems. I knew enough to not do that. Very good, yeah. Yeah, so um, my uh, profession is nursing. I'm a nurse. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, even the nurses are subject to all of these kinds of problems, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I knew enough to not have surgeries unless it was absolutely necessary and not to take certain kinds of medications. I knew that. So, yeah, I had the surgery. So I, I actually am functioning very well without uh, about a foot of colon, which is a lot, a lot, you know, really, because the colon isn't that long. It's only as long as you are tall and I'm five, six. So, um, you know, it's a significant amount to lose. Mm -hmm. Um, at that time, I was uh, actually uh, lucky enough, uh, if you want to use that word, to find a doctor that was um, not American originally. He was from India, and he had all of his schooling in India. And I'm convinced that that's why he was a lot more open-minded. So when I um, insisted to him that I was not going to have a hysterectomy, and I also wasn't going to take any of the medications, and so that I knew there had to be another way, and um, it's amazing because I really had to fight for my right to know that there was another way. Uh, we had several discussions, which were actually arguments, um, before he would finally uh, tell me that there was another way. And it was because what he was going to tell me was not in line with what uh, American medical schools, uh, you know, or the American Medical Association considers to be acceptable as far as you know, what a doctor can tell a patient. And he confided this to me, um, that he was about to, he actually said to me at one point, I'm about to cross the, the line of what it's allowed to tell people. Wow. And so would you know that the first thing that he told me that was crossing the line was that I should do regular enemas. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, can you believe that? Yeah. And then he, uh, he referred me to a, a naturopath because there was a lot that he couldn't tell me. But um, in the meantime, he did tell me that I should switch to uh, only fruit and vegetable diet. He didn't call it a raw food diet. He just said only fruits and vegetables. I could eat cooked vegetables, of course, so it wasn't raw food. But he said that the fiber and the fluid, the combination, of course, the natural combination of fiber and fluid would also help my colon to heal and that it would uh, remove a lot of the mucus, which was causing the problem to begin with, right? So um, I'm very thankful for that doctor um, forever because I didn't know that there was even a such thing as naturopathic doctors or any of that thing, you know, any of that stuff. I didn't know, even as a nurse, I didn't know. So um, it, it was amazing to me still to this day that I had to fight for the right to know this information. Incredible. When did you start your nursing career? Um, I was 30 years old. Yeah, I was about there, 28, 28. Yeah. So, are, you still, uh, are you still working as a nurse? Um, I'm not actually working at the moment. I've taken a long vacation. Um, but yeah, up until two months ago, I was working as a nurse, I'm actually a surgical nurse. Can you imagine that? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, there, there, there's, a, there's a purpose and a need for, uh, you know, uh, our hospitals, but um, the only thing is that um, they are controlled by uh, the big boys, you know, big pharma, and that's the, uh, that's the problem. So if they were uh, really truly uh, for the people and for people's health, there would be no money involved. And it would be set up that uh, it would be open to all sorts of different uh, uh, ways that uh, we can uh, work with the body, not just treating it, you know. So, you know, this is, this is where it's gone. But the only thing that's going to change is if the people demand changes uh, because uh, corporations now are, are dictating everything. Yeah, it's, it's actually worse than you think. And I know because I'm in on the inside. So, but yeah. I, I, now you said that you had reproductive problems and then uh, you ended up doing colon surgery. The blockage. Yeah, yeah. I had surgery to ah. remove the obstruction that was caused by the endometrial tissue, yes. Ah, okay. It's caused by the endometrial tissue. Yes. And so it was a serious uh, surgery. I mean, I did have to have that surgery at that time. But if I had known the uh, real answers to the problem beforehand, of course, I wouldn't have needed the surgery. But there was no doctor. I went to several doctors to try to find out what was wrong. At first, I didn't even know what was wrong, that it was endometriosis. And then after I knew, after I finally figured it out for myself what it was, then I um, went to several uh, gynecologists to try to see what to do about it. And none of them knew what to do. To, you know, to cure it, of course, they didn't know what to do, but the only recommendations I ever got was to take birth control or to have a hysterectomy. How, how long ago was this? Yeah, I had the surgery when I was 30 years old, so that was 20 years ago. I'm 50 years old now. Because I'm trying to figure out your age. You don't look <laughs> that much older than... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a master fast. See, it reverses aging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's interesting how they they believe that the endometriosis has caused the colon blockage, whereas I believe it's the other way around. Uh, well, there was a mass on my colon, and it wasn't there before. I mean, it, it was caused by the endometrial tissue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, obviously, the yeah, but the obstructions do start from the bowels and. Yeah. Also, the we, we plug up the whole body through the GI tract. Right. It's getting plugged up through that. Because yeah. Also, yeah. I was um, going to say that even though I had a healthier diet than most people, it's still there were many things in my diet that were causing me a lot of health problems. Mainly dairy mm -hmm. um, and then bread and pasta. Those were the things that my body just doesn't do well on at all. Yeah. Especially when we overeat them. I don't, think, I don't think anybody's body does well on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so uh, you went through all that scenario, and uh, now here we are about 20 years later. When did you uh, start changing your diet? When you, after you discussed uh, things with this doctor? Yeah. Right, I was about 34, 35 years old when I fully embraced uh, the high raw um, fruit and vegetables only oh. diet. Yeah. yeah like so, um, uh, everything is functioning perfectly well now with my reproductive system. I still have everything intact and, and, uh, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Um, ever since then, it's interesting. Um, I wanted to say, because I know a lot of women who go on the master fast, it comes up in our group a lot about losing their periods and they get worried or concerned. Um, but I mean, once I went on the high raw diet, I stopped bleeding, of course, but I was still ovulating. Of course. And it's important for a woman to understand that there's a difference and mm -hmm. to understand how to check for ovulation, um, but to not worry about losing the bleeding part. I mean, because we're not meant to be bleeding to begin with. Exactly. So you stopped menstruating completely on a raw food diet? Yeah, I stopped bleeding. I, I don't like to say stop menstruation because I think part of menstruation is the ovulation. So, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, it, it, it sounds concerning to people. Yeah, menstru to menstrual women. cycle, I guess. Yeah. Right, right. And also it just freaks women out if you say that. I so know. I <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, you know, yeah, they think is, we're going, you know, the anorexic way, you know, like we're, we're 
people yeah. are so sick, then they lose their freedom. Yes. Yeah. So there is a good book on the subject. Uh, if I can remember the name in a second, I will say it. Um, cool. Yeah, I can't remember the name right now. So, but it's on the. If they want to search on the Masterfast uh, Facebook page, um, they'll find it because I put it in a post once. Mm. And it was in response to a question that someone had about menstruation. So. Yeah, it, it comes up quite a bit. Uh, we've discussed it many times, and uh, some people just through the ignorance, they they just they can't believe that that's healthy, and they just don't have the understanding. Uh, right. You know, it's just a simple uh, mm -hmm. simple thing to understand. Um, you know, when the body has no toxins, there's no reason for the womb to shed. Mm -hmm. So simple. Everything works perfectly. And yes. uh, it's ready for a baby anytime. No need for shame. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. So you did completely raw food diet for a while? I only did a complete raw food diet for two months, actually. And, but then I was eating um, high raw, just fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And then just occasionally I would do whole grains like quinoa or um, millet, teff. Um, but actually I don't, you know, do that too much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so since about five years now, or no, more than that, and no, did, a lot uh, more than that. Um, <laughs> when, once you started changing, did you notice changes in your, the way you felt and so on and so forth? When Definitely. Um, my energy went through the roof. Um, a big change. I was actually way too tired and sick for someone so young at that time. Uh, my... Uh, mental attitude changed a lot. Um, I, it went from being sort of mildly negative and uh, uh, how can I say, um, what I would call a realist at the time, but really it was more like a pessimist. <laughs> and now I'm very optimistic in which in my youth, I was always very optimistic. So it's, it's good to see that it can come back, you know, so easily. Um, uh, let's see what else changed. My health, the, uh, the sleeping pattern changed a lot. Uh, I didn't need nearly as much sleep. And for a little while that concerned me also because I thought, oh no, I'm not getting eight hours of sleep. <laughs> because the theory is that you're supposed to, right? Have eight hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. I only needed six hours. Um, so, I, you know, I really haven't had ever slept more than that since then. Interesting. And uh, so you, you, you stayed on that for a while, and uh, how did you find uh, Masterfast? So, yeah, the interesting thing was after a while, I started to get um, issues with probably it's genetic because other people in my family have it. But, you know, of course, it's not really genetic, but I started to have problems with the fibromyalgia. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I, I think that it was started because of the stressful job. I switched to a more stressful role in nursing, which was surgical nursing. And, um, you know, I think that maybe I wasn't always staying so careful with my diet. I would cheat maybe more often than I was willing to admit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I, I really don't always fully know the reason why, but I uh, over about a period of 10 years, the fibromyalgia was getting worse and worse and worse until the beginning, uh, about a year ago, actually, not the beginning of this year. <laughs> it was the, oops, something happened. Somebody got their mic open? Mm -hmm. So about a year ago, I started to really uh, suffer from the fibromyalgia. And I decided I was going to do something about it, but I knew that I had to sort of leave the job that I was in. Otherwise, I wouldn't be free, really, from the stress. Um, so I actually saved all my money up for that year. And I was going to go to a spa in Costa Rica. I don't know if you've heard of it, the Farm of Life. It's yeah. uh, raw food only. And uh, they do very short water fasting and some other things. And um, so I was going to actually go there and spend three months there. But I got sidetracked and I ended up coming to Sedona instead. Can I get your picture back on here? Because it, oh, there, okay, I got it now. Yeah, it had gone away. So, yeah, I ended up coming to Sedona instead. 
But yeah, you know that in the meantime, I did uh, the 108 days of the master fast. I started in uh, March, March 20th. And the reason I found master fast is because I was actually following Dr. Morris because I knew that a lot of my issues with the fibromyalgia were with kidney filtration. And then, so I, through that, I found Mark Gordon. Mark Gordon had some excellent, excellent videos about kidney filtration. And then um, he had decided he was going to do the master fast also. So I thought, well, I'm going to just follow him and see what this crazy thing is that he's talking about because it sounded really extreme to me. And um, so, yeah, I followed him very closely through his process, his experience of the master fast. And uh, I was very impressed, you know, I was actually very impressed with it. So I felt like maybe I should look into it more. So uh, yeah, it was the beginning of this year that I joined the Facebook page. Well, I had gone to the website before that and I read everything like maybe three times because mm -hmm. I was you know, still very skeptical at that point. Um, but uh, yeah, when I saw how well Mark did on it, that was actually the thing that really inspired me to try it. And um, then when I went to the Facebook page and I saw the many uh, testimonies and how beautiful a community that it is, uh, people are so supportive. And so, yeah, when Mark said that he was going to start on the 20th um, with another, you know, with a group of people, then I just knew that I had to do it. Like, I knew that I had nothing to lose, right, and everything to gain. So... Wow. Yeah. So you, you did, you completed 108 days. I did. I did 108 days. And then, uh, and it was a, a, a beautiful experience. Um, you want to share what happened through those 108 days? Well, I have to say to begin with that I didn't suffer as much as um, you would expect. I guess maybe I had a head start because my diet was fairly clean. Um, but, um, I might, I would say the most, the large part of my suffering was the emotional things that came up, which I expected. So mm -hmm. I was prepared with having a therapist on hand whenever I needed. Um, but I'll go just through the, the process. Um, so I would say the hardest part were the first three days, just adjusting mentally and uh, getting over the nervousness of what's going to happen because I was still working full time and um, it was important that I be, uh, you know, fully functional at my job um, because it is, it's a very important job, it's very serious. You can't go and do surgery on people, be involved with the surgery of people if you're not, you're full, you know, at full capacity. Mm -hmm. So, but once I saw that I was, you know, capable of still going to work every day and not having any uh, real problems, then I was able to relax into it, into the routine of it. And so my regular daily schedule was that, because I had to be at work so early every morning, 6.30 or 7, um, I would uh, finish, I'll start with how I finished the day. I would close my drinking window at about 8 p.m. That was when I would have the last cup of tea at, with the tinctures. And then I would stay dry until my morning break. And every break is fully scheduled. Like I, you can't just leave and go on break. So I had to always wait for someone to come and give me a break. So I mean, I know you recommend um, to drink the juice throughout the day, like you know, sipping. But I was never never able to do that. What I had to do was on my morning break and then lunch break and then afternoon break. I had to, that was when I could take juice in. So I would drink a half of a liter. I always drank two full liters every day. I never reduced that amount because that was what I needed to be fully functional. So I would drink half a liter on my morning break and then a whole liter at my lunch break, which was 45 minutes, and then another half a liter at my afternoon break. And that was my full intake for the day. And then, except for the pudding, I would have like at dinner time, like around six, mm -hmm. around six, six thirty. So there would be a little bit more juice with the pudding, but not much. And um, so I always did between a tablespoon or two tablespoons of the pudding mix. Um, and 
And then, yeah, I just did the two cups of tea with tinctures uh, at the beginning of the day and then at the end. Uh, I didn't do uh, the, uh, I know you don't recommend this, but I didn't do enemas every day because I did have regular bowel movements most every day. But I did do it at least three times a week, uh, especially after the longer drive. So for the dry fasting on the weekends, I would do my dry fasting since I wasn't at work. And then I could, you know, just relax and take it easy and take care of myself. I did find that if I did more than 24 hours that I would get very weak and sometimes a little dizzy. So I would just stay home on those days and just not do anything so that it wouldn't really be an issue. So and you, I worked your daily, weekly, and monthly dry fasting. How long was that? So my daily drive was at least 16 hours, sometimes 18. No. And yeah. And that was again because of my work schedule that I could only it, it was easier in that sense that I could go longer on the drive because I could only drink at certain times anyway. So um and then for my uh, weekly long dry, I started out with 24 hours on like on a Saturday. And then after I did that for like six weeks, maybe it was eight weeks, I, would, I moved to 36 hours. So I would go into Sunday. And I did that again for about six or eight weeks. I don't remember exactly. And then um, I do remember the last six weeks, uh, I did 48 hours every weekend. Mm -hmm. So... Um, but usually I got pretty weak on the second day. Do you have any other fasting experience before this? Just some juice fasting. Um, I did, yeah, the longest juice fast I did was 21 days. And um, then I did the master cleanse for a week. And yeah, that I guess I did maybe three juice fasts, like maybe a week long each. And then one was 21 days. What, what kind of juice did you use? Just all different kinds of fruit and vegetable juice mixes. You know, I have a very good juicer, um, a high quality juicer. So I was just making my own juices. A lot of work? Yeah, I mean, it, it's still less than cooking, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> once, on, once you're on the master fast, everything becomes a lot of work. <laughs> Yeah, it's all relative because I always felt good on the juice fast, but it didn't cure. It was hard to maintain afterwards. I would say that's the difference between when I was the mentality when I was doing the juicing was that I could go back to the diet that I was eating because in my mind it was a fairly totally decent diet. Yeah, With the master fast now, I understand though that you know there's no going back. So <laughs> um, I don't, you know, I don't. Uh, yeah. It is tempting sometimes. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, it's um, why 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 do we want to go back? You know, it's living that it's that life. You know, your environment dictates outcomes. So if you do the same things, the same outcome is going to come. And this is where it's it's a challenge for some people to get that understanding into them. Like they think, you know, you do this 108 days and bang, it's you're all done. Go back to whatever you were doing. It doesn't work that way. And you know, it's, yeah. uh, I'm glad you brought that up because that's the challenge we have to um, get this information. And since day one, I've been saying it's a lifestyle change. You can't go back. Yes. Well, you can if you want, but you'll go back to where you were in not, you know, not too long of a time, six months, a year. You'll be back to where you were worse if you go back. <laughs> Well, on the few times that I was tempted and I cheated, I felt the, re you know, the repercussions right away. Like the next day, you know, your body gives you the very clear signals that that was the wrong things to do. Yeah. So, and that's why since I finished the 108 days, I have been on the, you know, the many protocols, uh, a week on, a week off, a week on, a week off. Because I, I find if I go too long off, then the, the temptation gets worse, gets harder. So it's it is easier to stay on the master fast. Um, you do you're doing the full master fast for a week and then you're eating for a week. Yes. And or when you're like, eating, you're doing well, the like hybrid. Said, yeah. Well, I try to stay with the hybrid, but I do sometimes eat other things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm just I'm just wondering yeah. what you're doing exactly. 
So you, you've been yeah. doing that how long? One on and one off? Since the since I finished the 108 days. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. awesome. So since the beginning of July, now it's the middle of October. So you guys in, um, are like under control right now, um, you know? Yeah, it's pretty well under control. Yeah. Um, th there's still a lot of mental, you know, stuff that goes on that says, oh, you could eat this or you should eat that, or you know, if you're seeing something that is right in front of you and it smells good, or you know, my one the favorite food that I always loved. Mm. Um, it's still a temptation, but it's more mental than anything. Um, because I know that um, physically, like I'm usually not even hungry. That's a weird phenomenon, but I'm not really very hungry very often. But still the tastes and the smells and the memory and all of that. Yeah, the emotions. It's all emotional attached yes. to the food. But uh, I'm doing now the one day a week of eating and the rest would be master fast. And when I eat on Sunday, I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. But um, I'm looking forward for the emotional attachment, you know, like to enjoy the taste or whatever, but really not hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Think, yeah you get a few bites and then you're like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Just for the taste, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I understand now that the only time that I ever eat, it's just for entertainment. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We, live on, uh, we live on light and we eat occasionally for fun if we choose. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's really what it is. And that's, you know, I've been slowly, slowly bringing that information over time because so many people are just, they're just not ready. And they just yeah. don't have the understanding, the belief system and the programming. But, you know, uh, after doing a few master fasts, we all realize that. Yes. Yeah, I think that's the only way to realize it is once you get your system clean enough and then you realize that, oh, mm -hmm. I'm about to eat this one food that I love, that I always have loved in the past, but I'm not hungry. So what does that mean? You know, it means that it's just because it's going to taste good and I can have the memories back again of before yeah. when it was good. But then a lot of times when you do eat it, it doesn't taste as good as it used to. And then the, the body has this weird reaction because it didn't really want it. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're crossing over into a very odd and unusual territory here. <laughs> it's unusual for people that want to want to expand their mind, I guess. But it's when yeah. uh, once you've done the once you've experienced the you you start understanding. It's the only way is through the experience. We can talk till we're blue in the face all day, all long. We can go take all the courses in the world of all these natural this, that, and the other thing and naturopathic doesn't mean anything the experience tells you exactly you it. it's, yeah. it's 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 the end it gives you the understanding uh like i say the experience will trump all the paperwork on this planet and uh this is <clears throat> where i where i stepped in after years watching people and i'm going i don't think you know these guys know what they're talking about I, I, that's not what i'm experiencing because i've been i pushed my myself very very hard over the many years with different experiments and fasting and so on and so forth. And I just couldn't see what these people are talking about. It's, you know, I'm doing things completely different and I'm getting different results and much better results and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, I, it, all the things that led up to the point, you know, in my life were for a purpose as I look at it now to bring it out and start sharing with people because I knew I could help people. And, um, and it's uh, it's working out very well, you know. Our uh, club is a very good support system, you know. It's just exactly what I envisioned. And so it's beautiful for that we all uh, can expand together and uh, get our, our awareness uh, yeah. uh, up to par to where it's supposed to be, and uh, keep expanding and learning from each other. In just these last two and a half years, we've been sharing, man. We, we've learned so much from everybody doing the fast. Mm -hmm. So much. It's just a beautiful thing. Um, you know, I just uh, we I just posted the uh, the new mm. protocol, which is not new. I've, I've I've done this protocol in the past, and uh, and I, I, we but talked I about it on the other the calls with, with Michelle. I I started discussing it with Michelle, and she never lost one animal with that protocol that was on its way out. Um, you know, you guys can read that. Uh, it's the uh, what do we call it? Oh, MFS colon feeding uh, protocol. 
Um, yeah, I saw that interview with Michelle. It's very interesting. I might try that at some point in the near future. It's powerful. I'll let um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've uh, over the last couple of years or so, I've mentioned to it to some people that were uh, on the page that were having problems keeping things down. I says, you know, feed yourself through the colon, but that's about it. So I just, it was time now to write it out mm -hmm. and, and, and make it available as a tool that we can use because you can save lives with, uh, with this uh, uh, very easily. Uh, you know, as we mentioned, yes. if all the hospitals had a colon therapist in there, yes, be saving so much money, mm -hmm. yes. so many lives. Just, just with that. True. Yes, I've seen it many times myself, many, many times. And there are many people that aren't able to take in anything orally. And usually they put like a tube into the stomach, but um, that doesn't always help either if there's stomach cancer or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is pretty ingenious, the feeding through the colon. It, of course, every doctor and nurse knows it's possible, but the idea of it is never something that you would consider. So. Yeah. Yeah, because no one has ever suggested it. <laughs> it's time for them to, I, to invent it, I guess. I, I don't know. I I, they invented a long time ago. <laughs> I was, uh, I was uh, not really shocked, but I was uh, surprised when Michelle said she uses it on animals, the animals. Oh, I go, really? I go, yeah, yeah why not? <laughs> you know, I never heard that before in animals. It's, that was something new to me. So, you know, yeah, we can save our animal friends as well, you know, with animals. Definitely. So, forth. so uh, maybe you want to share some of the experiences you had during the uh, during your 108 days. You, you've had the release. Did you lose weight? Uh, right. So I started out weighing more than I needed to. Uh, so it was pretty easy because uh, I, maybe that's why I had such an easy time with the 108 days because it was just about burning the fat and releasing the toxins. Um, so I did lose 40 pounds during that 108 days. And I actually still have some weight to lose, which I understand that that means waste and so that there are still toxins that need to go. So um, not knowing exactly what my ideal weight is, but I know that I'm not there yet. So that's another motivation for me to stay on the Master Fast, at least going back and forth. So I do a week um, of full Master Fast, and then I do a week of the hybrid, with some cheating every once in a while. Yeah. Um, and so I have in the past two months, I guess it's July, August, September, so it's two and a half or three months mm -hmm. that I've been doing the mini master fast protocol mm -hmm. that I've lost another 15 pounds. Good for you. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, so yeah, um, I can exercise a lot more now than I was able to before because with the fibromyalgia, I wasn't able to exercise at all. Oh, really? So, yeah, here in Sedona, there's a lot of hiking. So I've been hiking almost every day. And wow. I'm able to do a moderate hike pretty easily now. So I'm very happy about that. Well, that's awesome. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, going back to my experience during the 108 days, I, um, like I said, I was still working full time. I was able to work full time with no problem as long as I maintained the two liters of uh, two quarts of the juice, um, so I never did reduce that um, because I tried once, I tried two days to reduce it and I just didn't have the energy. Any uh, emergency bathroom runs at work? No, I didn't, I, I um, no emergency bathroom runs. I, um, if actually I did tend towards the constipation a little bit so that was when I would do the enemas. That was when I would need to do an enema. Um, and that was usually about once or twice a week. And then I always did an enema at the end of the long drive, of course. So usually three times a week I would do an enema. And uh, otherwise I had a just normal bowel movement. I, took, I did about a, a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of the plasma pudding. So I think that that kept me from having, you know, like really bad diarrhea or anything like that. I, I didn't have any problem like that. Mm -hmm. I, I did have a lot of worms come out. I never took pictures, but mm -hmm. I did see, um, you know, I always looked uh, to see, but I never inspected too closely. Um, <laughs> I, I wasn't into inspecting very, inspecting very closely, but I did see a lot of worms come out. 
Wow. So that answered a lot of questions for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, so I'm sure the, the pudding was what was uh, taking the worms out. Mm -hmm. By the way, I had done the turpentine protocol before I did the master fast, um, but I didn't do it during. Um, but you know that it does take a lot of worms out too, you know, a lot of uh, candida and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So I was going to say that I think that master fast does just as good a job as taking candida and, and worms and so forth parasites out as the, um, the turpentine does. Well, there's two different ways to look at it. The candida, it's, people are using it to get rid of worms. Master fast, we're using it to change the terrain. And yeah. the worms have to leave. There's, there's no way they can live in that environment anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Because well, they get caught in the plasma pudding too. They get just yeah. encased in there, and then they, they have to come out. Yeah. But uh, you know, the actual fasting is changing the terrain, dumping all these toxins and everything. So there's no purpose for them to stay there. When you're just using something to kill a herb or whatever, um, yeah, they're gonna you're gonna kill some of them. They're gonna you're gonna get rid of them. But the the terrain is not really changing so much, and you'll get them back very quickly. Well, especially if you eat regular food, then they'll come back very quickly. Even the well, you know, yeah. we have a lot of raw foodists on our page full of worms, and a lot of fruitarians full of worms. Yeah. Not able to change the terrain through an eating program, is right. what I'm trying to say. This is the what I was discussing earlier is people really don't understand what detoxification really is. If you think going on a fruit diet is detoxification, then you don't understand what detoxification is. Detoxification starts when you stop ingesting anything. You know, you have to give the body a complete digestive rest. <clears throat> That's the whole thing of uh, master fast is a glorified dry fast. And then right. we wash in between, you know, that's, that's the, yes. the whole concept and why we're getting the results we're getting. Um, yeah, it's great. You change your diet. You're going to feel, start feeling better, everything, but you're never going to get to the levels of what we're doing of cleansing, you know, cleaning out all our pipes as we do with Master Fast because of the differences in belief systems of what detoxification is. Some people think eating fruits is detoxification. So, and uh, yeah. we, we've shown that uh, it's not the case. Ultimately, it's uh, definitely you know, to stop food. That's, that's it makes a big difference. Like, you know, Adrian, if you stick on this and you stay on this, I, I can't see why the body cannot regenerate the colon to where it was. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I haven't thought about that because I, I, it functions very well now. Um, but so I didn't realize that it, it was something that I might Every, want to Everything's possible. Like, you know, you know, how long will it take? I don't, I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there. Everything's yeah. possible. Um, it's just amazing the things that we've seen that would happen uh, when you allow the body and put the body in a position where it can do that work. And that's, that's the key, is uh, stop ingesting everything. <laughs> were, you, were you ever constipated in the past? Yes, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. it, well, I wouldn't say it was chronic, but there were periods of time when I definitely would suffer from some constipation. Mm -hmm. And I usually would just drink like an herbal tea that helped. Mm -hmm. um, but after I had the surgery where I had part of my colon removed, then there were all sorts of digestive irregularities. Sometimes I'd be very constipated. Sometimes I would have diarrhea. That was partly my motivation for arguing the doctor down to the point where he finally agreed to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And his first suggestion was regular colonics or um, enemas. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's all interesting how it all flows together. Yeah. And when you changed your diet, then they started moving every day, right? When you changed your diet? Yeah, when I changed to the high raw fruits and vegetables only. But, you know, in the end, I, I would have to say that maybe I was still, con you know, constipated, not in the eyes of what a doctor or a nurse would say is constipation, mm -hmm. but it, that's been a thought in my mind as to why maybe that was what was causing the um, fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. Because maybe there was still uh, a lot of stool that wasn't being passed out. It was still sitting in my colon. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, there were obviously a lot of worms, you know, parasites and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that could be a reason for the fibromyalgia. Uh, yeah, you, you said that eventually, like in the past 10 years or so, you, your diet wasn't, sometimes you were eating things out of stress, right? 
I, I would suggest. Um, yeah, not yeah. often, not often, but um, it would be every once in a while. Yeah, yeah, but that yeah. would be big for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was having at least a bowel movement every day. Uh, ideally, I mean, according to what the doctor was telling me, I should have three. So um, I wasn't always having three, you mm -hmm. know. So I guess you could technically say that that was constipation. Which part of the colon did they remove? Right where the ileocecal valve, right where it connects to the small intestine. Yeah. So that first uh, foot of the colon. Descending. So the appendix yes, as well was removed? The, 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 the ileocecal valve was also removed, but he fashioned one surgically. Uh, so I have a fake ileocecal valve um, that he used oh. part of my colon and he, he created one. So um, I, yeah, I should say that during the 108 days, I did feel the, um, like the, the I, there would be like a, a clog happening there at that point. Um, and so that was one indication that I would have that I should do an enema because there was like uh, the valve mm -hmm. is probably not functioning as well as it should because it's not actually a real ileocecal valve. You should be doing enemas every day. <laughs> You're right. I agree. You will only get better results and have a yes. better uh, experience. Like some people, you know, you didn't have any major healing reactions besides the emotional stuff. Well, when you did the Two day dry, you get tired. Yeah? yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I had a major healing reaction, but yeah, when I would do more than 36 hours, more than 48 hours dry, then I was in the bed and, and I really couldn't do any more. Yeah. And, and it was obvious that I needed an enema after that. Yeah, it was very obvious. Were you uh, exercising during the 108 days? No, I did not do any exercise because I did have some adrenal burnout. And because I never felt like exercising even before that, um, so I just, I, I felt it was wiser to not try to push it in any way. I never did feel like I had the energy to exercise. I did do very light yoga, maybe 20 minutes. And then I would do, uh, like every other day, I have a rebounder. So I would get uh -huh. like, gender, but yeah. only like five minutes on the rebounder, like every other day. So you worked a 40 hour a week, Monday, Friday? Yes. Yeah. 40 hour week and it was pretty stressful job. So that was my exercise. Yeah, standing all day um, and also lifting patients a lot. And so, and a lot of mental, you know, uh, work, you know. Any lightheadedness experiences or? Only when I tried to reduce the amount of juice that I was drinking, then my blood pressure would go down. But it, so I only did that twice, and then I figured out not to do that. <laughs> but yeah, that's the main reason why I never tried to reduce the uh, juice, and I also never went past 18 days on a daily, 18 hours on the daily drive. Usually, I stayed at 16 hours because that I needed that amount of time to get the juice in, and um, because then I would start to feel it if I went past 18 hours. And yeah, so we wasn't. tell people now maximum 15 hours uh, of daily drive. Um, if they are new to the fast, because it's, oh, yeah. uh, otherwise they become tired. Yeah. They don't realize. A few people got themselves in trouble uh, because, you know, we, we say less is more, but not for somebody who comes from a toxic background diet. You know, this, this takes a few years to get to that, uh, to change the body into uh, being, being able to live with less is more. You, you can't do it right off the bat with a, a body so toxic, and a toxic yeah. body is dehydrated as well. They go hand in hand. So, you know, we have to gradually work towards that. So this is what I'm saying. We've learned a lot from people doing the fast and a few people really just not listening and thinking they can uh, speed things up or whatever. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you have to slowly work your way up. But, you know, it can be tempting also because you do feel better on the dry fasting uh, the for me the mental thing that happens that that was always my biggest struggle it still is now the biggest struggle is mentally because my physical body doesn't ever demand food anymore so that I feel better on the dry my mind is quieter and clearer so it can be tempting to push fast farther than what you're capable of yeah the body doesn't need any physical foods right it's very difficult for most people to believe but hey 
you can believe whatever you like. <laughs> We're not forcing you. <laughs> yeah, we know we know it's possible. We know that you can live without food. Because uh, our body requires energy, not food. And uh, we're getting energy every second of the day. That's why we're able to continue out day in and day out. And when you eat, you know, just consider when you eat how much energy the body needs to, to digest that food. Where does the body get the energy to digest the food? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> you know, there's things that, you know, they're staring us right in the face. It's just our, uh, we're, we've been indoctrinated and and program to believe we need to eat and it's a very deep program and we all uh, in our subconscious believe that and it's very very difficult thing to unprogram so it's it's it's, uh, it's something that we need to train ourselves slowly and slowly work out of it some of us will do it quicker some of us will take longer and some of us will never get out of it and it's okay it's okay but uh, we know that we can push uh, Give that little push, that little nudge to people to live a lifestyle of less is more. You know, you don't need to be uh, nowhere near uh, six, seven days a week anymore. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Okay. ridiculous. You know, three days, three, three meals a day. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. One meal to, uh, I'm sorry, one day to five, six days a week maximum, you know, two meals a day it should be uh, people program when they go back to food. Um, that that's uh, yeah. They choose whatever they want. Yeah. Uh, to, to feel good. Yeah. It's, it's just start, Fasting just, is the way to go. Definitely, <laughs> it's not eating. When you keep eating, you just start plugging up your pranic tube again, the GI tract, the plasma tube. I like to call it. It's just that's the problem. It's, we obstruct it with these things that it's not supposed to be in there. So if we if we continue and maintain light eating minimally and continue fasting. It keeps moving through very nicely, and we feel great all the time. And, uh, yeah, I feel very good with what I'm doing right now because it balances out the mental struggle. The, the you know the mind says it wants food, and uh, so you know I see other people eating the food, and so it helps to have that balance of being able to eat sometimes. But I definitely couldn't eat three meals a day. That would uh, make me probably ill if I tried to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it does help, you know, to have the week where I'm allowed to eat a few things mm -hmm. and then a week where I'm not eating, it, it feels good that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, I wanted to mention that the fibromyalgia, I would say, is about 80% healed. Yeah, and so it was pretty bad when I started the fast. Um, a lot of uh, joint pain, uh, a lot of pain almost continually before I started the fast uh, in all of my major joints and even sometimes minor joints. And the pain is completely gone, uh, but there is still some stiffness in the joints and the muscles a little bit, but I have a pretty high criteria. I was able to do, when I was at my top health, um, I was able to do yoga pretty well, sit in lotus position and all that. And so that's my criteria now is when I finally get back to being able to do lotus position, then I'll know that the fibromyalgia is completely healed. Mm -hmm. So that's how I kind of judge that it's about 80% healed. So, I mean, people who know me now would not think that there was anything wrong. They would say that I was perfectly healthy because I, I love to dance also. So I dance a lot. And, uh, and But I try to tell them it's a miracle what you're seeing, the fact that I'm dancing around like this because seven months ago I couldn't do it at all. And that wasn't that long ago. So they don't really believe me, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I should have taken a video of myself at that time, but it would have been a very sad video. So just, just think of when you first heard about Master Fast and you were skeptical. Everybody's skeptical. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because it's not the norm out there, you know, listening to people being able to uh, uh, fix their problems and heal themselves. So you don't hear you know, a lot of it out there. It's there, but uh, it's not mainstream. That's for sure. Not the, oh, you, you that's you, you can't cure that, and that's all we hear. You know. Did, did uh, the fibro, fibromyalgia affect your work when you had severe? Symptoms? Did it affect my work? Well, it was starting to. I was very afraid of that because I was having a lot of uh, nervous. Uh, I'm not nervous, but the nerve, the nerves of my. Um, arms and my legs were starting to be affected. Uh, a lot of inflammation on the nerves, especially coming from the spine area. 
So um, I was starting to have trouble with the standing all day. I was starting to have tremors in my arms a little bit, like sometimes just a little bit of a, I don't know how to say, like a spasm. And, but it was more like the nerves were being, uh, you know, sort of, I don't know, pinched or shocked or something like that. Yeah, uh, that's body the, the numbness, cramping, stuff like that, tingling. It's just the body's doing its thing, working the obstructions out of those areas. That's all it is. Right. And sometimes it, the cramps could be very severe. I've had have, have horrific cramps. Like I'd have to, like my, my calf, I'd have to hold my foot with two hands in the middle of the night to stop it from cramping. How tight the cramp was. It was just insane. And then all of a sudden, you know, a few days later, it never happened again, gone. Yeah, I don't know when it stopped, but there was a point when all the pain went away. And then I, I think I put a post uh, on, face, on the Facebook page about it that one day I just stood up and I started walking and then I realized, hey, it doesn't hurt. That's, you know, like, because it had been hurting for 10 years. <laughs> That's good that you mentioned that. Uh, so many people, they, they do the fast and everything. And then, you know, they start eating and they eat wrong things. They start complaining about these little things, but they forgot where they came from. They had a huge list of things that are just not there anymore, and they're complaining about these little new things that they're bringing up again. And it, this happens all the time. So I, you know, nudge people, go read your testimonial. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we can, also, yeah, I think when we start eating, sometimes we feel guilty, you know, we get some, you know, mild symptoms, but it's nothing compared to where we were before. So, you know, it's okay, you know. Yeah, you know. Just fall off a little bit off the wagon, it's okay, you know. You uh, you plan an another 108 days in, in your mind? Is, uh... um, yeah, I was thinking about starting at the winter solstice, uh, December 21st or whatever that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. But I'm not sure yet, but that was what's in my mind. Uh, yeah. You yeah. Going, you're going back to work? Maybe. <laughs> no, you don't know yet. <laughs> I'm having too much fun right now to yeah. think about it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, when I do go back to work, it won't be as a surgical nurse. I'm sure about that. Mm -hmm. So I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do yet. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, like, uh, you know, you, you, 108 days is a start. That's all it is. Yes. All it is. Just imagine, you know, nine years go by if you continue this where you'll be, you know. It's well, just, I can continue what I'm doing right now indefinitely. I know that. Uh, the week on, the week off, I know that I, I couldn't powerful. eat more than what I'm eating now anyway. So I, I'm sure that I could do this for, for several years, yeah. How do you find uh, starting the fast each, each second week? I find it to actually, I'm usually pretty eager to start by then. <laughs> oh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> it's not hard at all. I start with the 24 hours at least dry. And so that helps. The dry fasting is the easiest, would be on the shadow of a doubt. So um, you're maintaining your dry schedule, right? Your two days a week. Yeah, one, one. No, I'm just doing one day, either 24 oh. or 36 hours right okay. now. And then plus your daily. Yeah, plus the daily. And the daily, I do push a little bit farther now, about 18 hours, because I can. Right. Uh, because I don't have a any other scheduled things that are keeping me from doing that. Yeah. Um, do you uh, do you do your three day monthly? No, I haven't been able to go past forty eight hours. Oh, okay. I do. I, I like I said. Uh, I'm in the bed pretty long. You know, like the last part of that forty eight hours, I'm just in bed the whole time. Have you uh, read the part of the dry fasting where we introduce like a semi dry to allow yourself to push further? So dry. Uh, just drink a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, the juice and the uh, tea, we alternate. It's in the mm -hmm. tinctures are part of it. When you have a chance, you can go read. Yeah. And that will allow uh, you to push a little longer and train yourself to go beyond that barrier 48 hours. Okay. Where is it again? In the protocol? Yeah, in everything's the in the, in the protocol. Okay. Yeah. We're okay. Again. Yeah, we're continuously updating it. Uh, you know, is uh, so as we learn more things and try and make things clear for people, simplify it as much as we can. And, 
and yeah, so on and I mean, so forth. Yeah, I remember also that you know, when we feel tired on the dry fast, that towards the end of our longest dry fast, it's usually because the body is healing. So you want to have the faith. Yes, it's not comfortable. You know, use the tools, do whatever you can. If you have to sip a little bit of the juice, you know, to keep you going. But, um, but it's really healing deep when you feel tired. And enemas every day, if you're doing the one week or one week off, when you're doing the master fast, I would do enemas at least once a day. Just, on the wet days, yeah. Um, I'm I, I'm still doing the enemas even on the week that I'm eating. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So, and even I have a regular bowel movement. Even I still do the enema, you know, at least three times. Yeah. Have you noticed your colon got stronger after the 108 days? Yes. Um, yeah. I was. I, you know, I have some friends that are here with me in Sedona that are also that I have encouraged or inspired to do the master fast. And so, um, you know, they, they are just new to it still, but they're, you know, trying their way through it. So they'll do like three days or four days and they're on the Facebook page. Um, and so, uh, I was joking with one friend and they were asking me about doing an enema and I said, you know, they said, well, how long should you hold it in? And I said, of course, as long as you can. And they asked, well, what do you do? And so... <laughs> So I usually hold it for about 20 minutes. I get up, I go wash the dishes, I do laundry, I, um, you know, do whatever. Uh, you know, I don't go far, but I, I, I'm obviously staying in the house. But I do stuff around the house, and then I, may, I might sit and read a book or watch a video on YouTube or something like that. And then about 20 minutes later, I start to feel that it's ready to come out, so then I release it. But yeah, I mean, I feel that's pretty strong if I can just hold it comfortably for 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour. Have you ever tried it with the juice? No, I haven't done that. <laughs> maybe I'll try that next. I don't know what's going to happen if I do that. <laughs> if you should be able to taste it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I th I'm not joking. <laughs> it's best first to wash the colon and then feed it. Whatever. Yeah, so you don't waste it. You don't waste it. <laughs> so do a regular enema first and then put the juice in either way you never okay. waste anything going in the body yeah uh, then if you want to dilute it you can dilute it you know? mm -hmm. maybe do a couple of enemas with it <laughs> so you do the enema with the juice even if you're uh, drinking the juice or even if you're eating you can do that yeah you can it's a powerful cleanse in both ways okay interesting. it cleanses and it feeds it does both <clears throat> yeah. What do you normally do for your enemas? What do you put? The tea. I do the uh, kidney tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, the herbs are awesome as well. Everything that we okay. uh, even the grasses are very, very soothing and healing. The grass juices, any grass juices, wild grass, mm -hmm. barley, wheat, whatever you have. Um, the uh, baking soda is great for when people have the runs. It really helps save the burning. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. It's just yeah. It's it's a lifesaver. You know, uh, for that, and uh, you can use that occasionally as well. Interchange all of them, in or do any, you know, either one. They're all good. They all have their purposes. Um, that's the only things we recommend is what we list there. Those four things. We don't need to go anywhere else. You know, people always asking about coffee. And never ever do coffee. No, um, I'm not interested in that. People are doing lemon juice. You know, we don't. Put, it's on the protocol. It's lemon and uh, lemon with the grape, the same as we drink. Um, uh, so, you know, it, it, it's keep it very simple, you know, you know, the herbal teas, great, you know, you, you, you don't waste the tea, you know, the spent uh, herbs from your, uh, when you make your tea for drinking, you can reboil them and use them for the animals. Yeah, I just, when I make the tea, I make like two quarts of it, and then I use, well, I guess more than that. Because I use two quarts to make the tea, and then I make like another quart just to drink. But that lasts me a couple of days. Yeah. Do you reboil the herbs or no? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I leave it sit overnight. I have a special electric kettle that's glass, so it, it holds two quarts, and then I fill that up, and then I let it boil. And it, I mean, it does it automatically. It boils and then I leave it sit overnight and then the next day it's ready. And then I warm it for the enema or I just drink it straight for it, you know, to drink it. So I don't use the 
herbs again because they've been sitting all night. Mm -hmm. Which four minutes were you on? Tinctures. Tinctures. I have the divine nine plus the upper, upper and lower circulation. Yeah. And I got, I was using that, um, the, the circulation one because uh, I had gotten my iridology done by Mark Horton. And so I found that that one was, you know, necessary for different issues that I had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. The support for the, uh, for the, uh, with the tinctures is uh, is crucial for when we're fasting. And as you know, I keep saying that's the time where you load up on herbs. Don't waste your money when you're eating. You know, just you can do them occasionally, sporadically. But I, I, I I've I've seen over all these years is it's just your body gets used to them so quick, and they get used as food. They don't do what they're supposed to do. You need to be fasting. That's the purpose of herbs. They're not meant to be eaten every day like foods they're meant to be used for when you need them for healing purposes that's their purpose you know to help us and uh why do we want to be uh uh using them all the time anyway you know we shouldn't be eating every day we shouldn't be using using herbs every day either these are other beings that we don't we want to interfere with them as less as less we only use them when necessary including foods <clears throat> but uh, it's all good we're all learning um Anything else, uh, your, how did the intergibriosis uh, work out uh, in these 108 days? What, uh, what improvements have you seen? With the endometriosis? Yeah. Well, I never had a problem with that after I started with the high raw diet. Oh, okay. so you solved it. Yeah, it was pretty well solved at that point. And I actually, I was expecting to have some sort of healing, uh, you know, in the area of the uterus or in the ovaries because I had also had uh, ovarian cysts at the same time. Um, and even though it, the problem was you know, solved with the high raw diet, I thought maybe there's deeper healing that needs to be happening, um, but I never actually felt anything um, specific. Um, uh, I did have a, a few uh, times where I did bleed as though I ha was having a period, and I knew that that was just detox. Yeah, okay, that's what I was thinking. I was gonna ask you how to yeah. Yeah. yeah, after years, Sorry, mm -hmm. after years of not bleeding at all, then when I was on the master fast, I did bleed a couple of times. Like wow. A, so yeah, yeah. You, were, you were not bleeding for this whole time, and then all of a sudden right. you were bleeding again. Yeah. yeah. But then it only happened twice, and then it hasn't happened since. So. Yeah, anytime you see blood during a fast, it's, uh, you know, people, people get really worried and stuff, but unless you're continuously bleeding, you know, there's no need to worry. It's the body's healing, and it's... Uh, yeah. It's bringing blood in those areas to uh, allow the healing to happen. Yeah, bleeding yeah. From, from, from anywhere, anywhere, from where internal, whatever. Yeah. Some people throw up blood. Yeah. Some people pee blood. Some yeah. people, they, 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 when they go, uh, you know, number two blood. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's uh, yeah. a part of it's the good. It's good. It's always it's good. good news. I mean, uh, especially in endometriosis. Yeah, it's always good news to bleed when uh, when you're detoxing. It's, it's deep stuff. The blood is yeah. more cautious. We had a few people who um, who had um, very heavy bleeding mm -hmm. on the massive fast uh, because of endometriosis. Yeah, it's always a good sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just you know, if it gets out of hand, you got to be careful. But then, mm -hmm. with prudence, we can get through everything. Mm -hmm. This is uh, where the tools come in handy. You know, we have herbs to, if the bleeding gets out of hand to slow things down. Um, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, depending is, uh, on the condition. Um, uh, there's another woman I know with uh, cervical cancer who did the master class as well, and she was bleeding as well, which is great. You know? And now she's, I think, she said uh, she's about 80% healed according to the results. But it's, uh, still a little bit more to go. Yeah. I have another criteria for knowing that I am healed is because I had the swelling of the joints also because of the fibromyalgia, but my ankles were always the worst to, to swell. And uh, so I, you know, now I don't have the swelling very much. Um, only time I have it is, is when I'm eating. And then I immediately know that I'm eating too much. I need to stop is when I get the swelling in my ankles. Oh yeah. That's usually the kidneys. Right? Yeah, the kidneys are overloaded. 
Mm. Yeah, and my kidneys get overloaded pretty easily. So uh, they still have a lot of healing to do. Yeah, I mean, you just started, and uh, you're going to see a lot of things happen. You're still in the second phase of metamorphosis. It lasts at least one to two times the uh, length of the fast minimum. And a lot of things still happen in that second phase. And, uh, you're, and you're, you're continuously pushing, you know, you're, you're, you're doing every second week, uh, you're doing a mass fast. So you're doing a lot of work, a lot of work is going on. Um, yeah, we're doing really, really well. Yeah, yeah. In, a, in a few years, you can look back and you won't even recognize who the other person was. And, yeah, I'm sure. Well, even in the two months that I've been here in Sedona, I've inspired people because they've seen the difference in just that short period of time. Awesome. And that's, you know, that's why they want to try it too. You, do you know people in the area before you moved there? Or? Uh, just on Facebook, yeah. I didn't oh. know anybody in person. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know, but I, I make friends pretty easily. But because uh, I travel a lot, so I am used to making friends. But yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So you lost 40 kilos? Pounds. Um, 40 pounds, yeah. Pounds, and then 15 pounds? So 15 yes. Pounds. Yes. It's a bit of weight. <laughs> yeah, and I still have maybe another 15 to go, at least, I would say. I don't know. I don't have a scale. Um, so just whenever I can get on a scale, I get on one. But I'm pretty careful about not doing that too often because, you know, the numbers are kind of uh, scary. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, I, I judge by how my clothes fit. And if they don't fit anymore, then I know that that's like two dress sizes, right? And that's usually 20 pounds mm. is, you know, how, you, how I judge it. Awesome. <laughs> Anything else that... Uh, you want to share in that experience and what's going on? Oh. It, what is your, what's your origins, your family origins? I'm African-American. African? Yes, African, yes. So your, your family's in uh, the States? Yes. Washington, D.C. and Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Chicago, that area. That's where my family is. Have they seen you? <laughs> yeah, they've seen me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, they're pretty impressed with the results, but I still can't convince them to try it. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's another story. Yeah. So uh, they, uh, they know who to come to when they when, when they need help. Yes, they do. They they ask me for my advice all the time. Well, they always were because I'm a nurse, so they were always asking my advice. But ironically, they don't always take it. Uh, you know, so yeah. many people are still attached to what the doctor has to say. Yeah, yeah, it's very difficult for people like go that belief system. Um, it's ingrained within us deep, very deep, and uh, it comes out, you know, in times of, of uh, challenges that we go through. It really comes out that program. You oh, you know, I go see a doctor. <laughs> A monkey mind, I like to call it. Yeah. I did have a question for you. Sometimes um, I, I see people on the Facebook group and also some friends of mine who are doing it here. They want to know if you can uh, drink the bubbly more than just at the end of the, the dry fast because um, they like the taste of it. I don't really like the taste myself, but I do find it it's very useful. But is it possible to drink it other times? Uh, the kidney tea, you said? No, the, the Oh, the, the bubbly, the my, uh, bubbly. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> a lot of people enjoy it and some people don't like it. Um, I, I really wouldn't want to use that too often. Save it for the dry fasting, start and end of the dry fasting. You can use it occasionally in between, but I wouldn't go too much. We don't want to be taking in uh, the bicarbonate too much because our, our pancreas makes it. And anytime you start... Mm -hmm. Taking things that the body produces, the body stops producing them, right? So that's the real reason. Uh, the purpose of it is, you know, to help cool the kidneys into the fast. And then uh, once we come out of the dry, because we go into a really acid side of uh, chemistry, they call it, uh, to uh, help cool them down again when we finish the, uh, the dry. That's really the purpose of that. It's just cheap insurance. Um, once you've been on... Uh, couple of years of uh, regular master fasting and, and dry fasting 
Um, I don't really want to say this because people will probably take it wrong, but um, you can you can avoid that. You can just get in, eating fruit straight off of a dry fast when you. Um, been doing it for a while. This is only for experienced people, not newbies. Newbies will be playing with fire. That's why all these things are there and they're all crucial. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do once you, 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 you're in tune with your body and you know, you're cleaned out, you'll, you'll see things differently. <laughs> the, the awareness will come, you know, your body will speak to you of what you can do, what you can do. And it's, uh, it's not uh, rocket science, but, uh, you know, they want to try once or twice extra a week. I wouldn't go much more. Go with that. Um, save it for the dry fasting times. It does taste great. I, I used to make that from years ago. <laughs> I never knew you'd be using it for uh, dry fasting, but um, yeah, it's interesting. Very interesting. Um, and then I have another question about coconut water. Um, I know that if you do a very long dry fast, then you say you can break it with coconut water. But is it appropriate at any other time? Uh, because I know some people, especially here in Sedona, where it gets very hot and people do go hiking a lot, so there's a lot of sweating. And so um, if you are like sweating a lot, maybe two hours in the hot sun, and then the grape juice maybe is not going to be hydrating enough. I don't know. If, how you feel about that so then it's, it's, the question is can you drink coconut water to yeah. supplement? Um, people believe that what we drink hydrates us it doesn't work that way but um, um, I wrote about it, it was yesterday okay. um, coconut water is a liquid seed because the coconut is actual seed if you plant the coconut a tree grows right so it's a seed in liquid form and um, it's very, very um, heavy for a liquid. It's, it's, uh, you can live on coconut water pretty much. So it's more, more of a food than it is anything else. <clears throat> if you introduce um, drinking coconut water during your, your master fast, it will only take away from um, the cleaning power of the fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why I, I have it as an option for breaking your dries because especially when you're doing a long dry, it's that little bit of boost for people to come off the dry because it's, it's, it's more of a food than it is of anything else. So, you know, if you want to slow it down, you introduce coconut water or you introduce a green juice, it just slows everything way down. Is there anything wrong with it? Is anything right? No. It's where do you want to take your fast? How deep do you want to go? How, what are the results you're looking for? So, you know, this is the thing. Once people start doing it every day, you're just taking away from the fast. You know, there's many people have done uh, coconut water fast. Yeah, you're going to get results, but you're not going to get the results where we're getting on the massive fast. Why? And I've explained to you why, because it's more of a food. You can actually live on that as yeah. well. Um, okay. The uh, I wrote this, like I said, yesterday or today. Um, hydration comes from and is, is it comes from the actual dry fast. The trigger to hydration is the way I like to word it, is dry fasting. What you eat or what you drink does not hydrate you. Hydration is about hydrogen, not water. This is my opinion, my what I the way I see it and from my experiences. I could be wrong. This is not something I've read anywhere in a book. Um, so when you stop doing everything, meaning taking in anything orally from, uh, into your body, liquids or food, the body has to do the work. And when it's all plugged up, plasmatically, all these field interactions, they're not clear fields. They're interrupted from these obstructions. And the, the way matter is created is with two plasmas interacting in a figure eight creating matter all our physicality which is we're in a semi-matter state not a full matter state which is a gans gas in as a nano uh solid they call it a uh, state solid um this is created through field interactions not through matter we're using the matter that we take in and when we eat it the body has to convert it 
into back to a plasma state in order to use it in the fields to create matter. Same thing with the liquids. When we take it into the liquids, the body has to change it into a plasmatic and again state to create matter. So the, the funny thing is that the body's doing it all the time without anything. Just as you see the plants you're doing in front of your eyes every day with the sun. Mm -hmm. The roots are in the ground to, to hold itself and to connect to the elements to create fields so it can take the interaction from the sun and create the matter which is the plant growing. Um, and the water helps the uh, electrical uh, connections to happen. So this is the same thing with the body, but you know, our body can do without all that. It can do with it, nothing. The key is remove the obstructions. The more we clean up those obstructions, the better the fields work and the better we can hydrate. So that's why I say the trigger to hydration is the dry fast. It's the dry fasting. And um, there's tricks that you can, uh, we can do, uh, which is what master fast is, to allow the body to function and create its own hydration without anything. And this is going to be over months and over years for people to uh, hydrate the body. You know, we've, we've shown people get hydrated way, way, way more from when the time they started Master Fast till the time they finished uh, the Master Fast, they're more hydrated. Um, and people, some people were drinking like up to two gallons a day on, on water and were always thirsty. You know? Right. And then, you know, you don't get thirsty no more, you don't sweat as much anymore. It's because the body was so stressed from all this fluid that people are taking in, you know, bottled water is everywhere. Marketing works great. Otherwise, companies wouldn't be spending millions of dollars a month or a year or whatever they're spending to, uh, to uh, you know, uh, program people to, to buy this, this, that, and the other thing. You know, McDonald's, I don't know how much it spends. If they stop spending, their sales would drop and drop and drop and drop and drop. If they completely stopped all their advertising, sales would drop. They know it. That's why they keep spending the money. They, 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 otherwise, they, why would they spend all that money if they didn't have to? It would be ludicrous to spend the money if they didn't have to. Right. So it's the same thing with hydration. Um, hydration, your body makes it. Nothing you eat or drink. You it's the furthest thing from the truth. And if you feel tired and uh, dehydrate, whatever. If you feel tired when you're when you're hiking, I would say you know, uh, drink more juice. Yeah. Yeah. The, so don't go crazy with the dry fast when you're exercising because it's gonna, it's gonna the, the body's time. detoxing when you're dry fasting, and so you're moving your body is going to move the detox. You know, it's going to go deeper in detoxing. So take it easy when you're when you're hiking. Drink, you know, and it, drink more. Yeah, it'll take time for the body to be able to work on less. And if you you know if you need some uh, extra liquids, you drink the extra liquids, whatever. Um, but there's tricks to do the uh, the uh, low volume nasal breathing, the buteco type breathing, uh, rolling your tongue in back of your mouth, in the back of your throat, and sucking on that. That creates a field which brings in uh, hydration. You'll feel your mouth getting full of water. Um, there's many, many things that we can do. And of course, you know, continuously working on cleaning the obstructions mm -hmm. so then we can get uh, all these field interactions working and uh, bring in the hydration that we need, yeah. not through the liquids mm -hmm. or the yeah. foods. So eventually, you know, staying on the clean, whatever, the clean path, you know, uh, you would be able to hike with nothing. Really, we'll drive fast. We don't need it. So yeah. eventually, but right now, we're happy yeah. bodies. But as we say, just like for the newbies, you got to drink at least two liters, three liters a day. Yeah. You know, don't don't start on one liter, half a liter, and get yourself in trouble because it ain't going to happen overnight. In a few right. weeks, a few months, it's going to take time. It's going to take time. You know, um, for me, uh, the amount of liquids I take in is absolute minimal. My food consumption, my food bills are ridiculous. Um, it just takes, you know, over the years, it just, it just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. That's my goal, and that's what I'm working towards. Not everybody's goal. Some goals, some people's goal is to, uh, is to uh, live to eat, and mine's is to eat to live. <laughs> I'm not used to that. <laughs> not, not to eat <laughs> and still live, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, we have fun. We have fun with everything we're doing. It's all good. We're all learning. Uh, I'm just bringing out new ideas little by little uh, to expand our awareness and uh, as we learn from each other, we keep expanding, expanding, expanding. We all keep getting stronger as a MasterFast family. 
which is wonderful to see. Uh, so it becomes more and more powerful as a whole. Um, but it's just uh, it's just fascinating what's happening with all the, uh, the miracles in people, many miracles and big miracles and all sorts of things, the transformations. It's, so it's just uh, keeps us going. Keeps I mean, us. our own transformation, you know, but then watching other people going through it, it's just so good. Yes. You know? It's very beautiful to see. Uh, there's definitely a spiritual effect also. It's kind of hard to say spiritual because it's a different experience than I've ever had, when, especially when I do the dry fasting, like a 24 hour dry fast. But then uh, it just opens up the, uh, I don't know, uh, an area in the soul, or I don't know how to put it into words, but you feel more connected to the universe and to other people and um, more in touch with my own self. I feel um, it's beyond spiritual. Yeah. Dry fasting is as vast as the stars. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way yeah, I like this. It's so beautiful. Um, I mean, just imagine humanity going that road, you know, that route. It's just so beautiful. Yeah, like um, yeah, we care about each other, we love each other, you know, we support yeah. each other. A lot of for yourself then too. Yeah. You know, a lot of humanity is going in the path of more spiritual things, and they list all these lectures of this, this, and that, and it's it's very challenging for people to break through. Get on the cleansing, yeah. and whoa, yes, opens up. Yeah. Why? Why? Mm -hmm. It's just it. Uh, these yeah, these uh, these things that we take into our body, these states of heavy matter, block us. They block our field interactions. This is what I find. Um, yes. It's so much easier doing it through the cleansing. I find for myself. Yes. You know, some people will be able to do it without the, the, the diet and the cleansing, but I found very few can do it that way. Well, I had many spiritual experiences uh, through meditation before I ever did any fasting. Um, so that's why I say this experience is beyond that because it's not anything that I've experienced before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, it's awesome. You know, it just takes it to a different. Uh, Understanding, I guess we can put it. Yeah. Awareness, you know, perception. Yeah, I'd say a perception or an awareness of huh. the universe and how it functions, or my place in the universe. I would say I have a better uh, awareness of that. Yeah. The, the the point that really changed me for like a, a, a massive change was <clears throat> my first 12-day fast experience in Italy. Uh, when I hit, uh, I don't remember which day it was, uh, eight or nine, I came to a point where I had no desires, zero. I'm going, is this what it's all about? It was just yeah. amazing just to be. I didn't, yeah. <laughs> I didn't care about anything. <laughs> and from that point on, it was just amazing you know um just to feel that i never ever ever experienced anything like that in all my years of fasting until that point it's peace calmness something i mean i haven't so, i haven't done it but <laughs> so when you my when, was yeah three days. well i encourage that's why I, I talked about have you read the part about extending your dries with a little bit of wet i encourage people to go long on their dries when they go back on food mm -hmm. not on master fast mm -hmm. <laughs> when they go back on food okay. and uh, my my whole program what i do and what I, we teach is about on the season changes focus on doing those times go as long as you can you know make it a, make it a, like a ritual or any other time you choose uh four times a year Go as long as you can. You know, I just did uh, 11 days uh, on nothing, you know. And uh, I moved into, I, I did a week back on food, and then I moved into this other protocol that I've introduced in the uh, colon feeding. <clears throat> so there's lots to do. <laughs> Are you going to do a video on the colon feeding for YouTube so that we can? Uh, we should do a lot of videos on a lot of things. <laughs> it's to find the time. Right now, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty much taking care of my mother 24 hours. I've taken a break this weekend. My sister is uh, because of stuff that's happened with her. 
mm-hmm. and um, taking care of the page and the other th- things. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's a challenge, but uh, we do what we have to do. It's my mother, and I'll do it until the end of time if I have to. She brought me and took care of me, and it's my duty to take care of her. Um, it's, you know, um, so I can support uh, what she wants. Uh, she's not open-minded to what I'm doing, but I introduce a few things that she will do, and that's how I'm helping her. And uh, it's... it's uh, yeah, so it's okay, you know, we uh, we can't force people to do things. Um, but um, it's great. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. we want to do a protocol video, you know, we want to do different things. It, there's going to be a time that's going to have to be done when, I don't know, because... Uh, more and more questions are going to come up. I, I'm, I'm yeah, sure I, you'll be talking about it. I'm, I'm, I'm on the board a, a lot of hours a day. On and off, on a, a lot, a lot of hours, making sure you know people are uh, questions are answered because um, there's a lot of serious uh, challenges people have, and um, the support needs to be there because uh, when people um, take on uh, the responsibility for themselves, um, there's nowhere else out there really you can go that I've seen that has the support we do. And then in the knowledge to back it up, <clears throat> there's nothing out there really. So um, it's uh, the, the master fast is is uh, based on our support system, um, and we got to keep it up as much as we can. That's where we have a lot of admins. Uh, so just kind of always somebody there as much as we can have. Everybody's busy. Everybody's volunteering. So we do the best we can, but. Um, we, we try and get back as soon as we can. I see people are asking questions. Should I, should I try to answer some of those questions sure. now? Yeah, go ahead. Good for you to answer. So, mm-hmm. well, so I guess I, someone says what kind of experiences, I guess they're talking about the spiritual experiences that I said I had through meditation, because I've been a meditator since I was 16 years old, so mm-hmm. about 35 years that I've been meditating. So I've had... Um, almost every kind of experience. I would say the most profound ones were the um, like Kundalini awakening uh, type experiences. Uh, I've had experiences where I felt like the top of my head was taken off the and the crown chakra just sort of exploded and the third eye opened up into almost kind of like a, you know, um, I don't know how you would call it. Like is this maybe during like, Master Fast? Or no, before? no, this is before. <laughs> this is before. <laughs> I've had all of the experiences that you would call spiritual. That's why I'm calling my experience that I had with Master Fast is beyond spiritual Mm -hmm. because uh, it's not anything that I would have ever imagined or um, expected, you know, to feel so in touch with the universe and myself. Yeah, I've had out-of-body experiences. I've astral traveled. I I see these questions here. uh, yeah, that was all before the master fast. I, I haven't had those kinds of experiences lately. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess, uh, yeah, it's beyond spiritual, my experience with the master fast. Someone asked if anyone has ever cured varicose veins. I never had the varicose veins, but I did have the chronic uh, inflammation or swelling of my ankles. And that was easily cured after about a month on the master fast because uh, the pressure, uh, you know, varicose veins is caused from pressure on the, the like the portal vein. And uh, so the same for the swelling of the ankles, it's just pressure on the, the system. So once you relieve that pressure, then the swelling, the veins go away. You mean the body heals? Yes, the body heals. Yes. It's like the word cured. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't uh, mean to say that. <laughs> People, uh, yeah, only doctors try and cure. We allow the body to heal. I don't have the problem anymore. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Okay. Well, I'm not going to go. Yeah, someone's asking about the other experiences. I won't go into it very much. But I, I would say that um, just to, um, as a tip, that the clean body creates a clean mind so the high fruit diet the high raw diet the 
keeping a very clean diet, especially low fat, it really opens everything up very well. So um, that would be my main tip. I never took any uh, substances, just so you know. You know, it just came to mind now why they're, you know, pushing children to get into the fats. I think it just sort of numbs them out, cut off their connection. Well, I know that um, breast milk naturally contains a high fat. Obviously, it's more natural. It's the, the most natural. So I, maybe that's the, the theory behind having children eat high fat. So I don't know the, the ratio of fat in breast milk, but it is higher than what we would maybe expect. Milk is liquid light. Yeah. Breast milk is liquid light. Yeah. So is that a plasma field? I never thought about it. Yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. But they can live on them for years just on milk. Yes. Years, just nothing else, just mm -hmm. breast milk. So everything's there. It's not, if you go and try and analyze it, you're looking in the wrong place in the matter. It's in the spirit of the milk is where they're getting their nourishment in the light. And this is where um, we expand the awareness now again. Just like the cooked juice. It's not in the physical part. Where you know everybody's focused on the physical. And that's where they're at. It's okay. Yeah. Because we're not. <laughs> we've uh, we've gone beyond the uh, matter. We have to uh, we have to if we if we if we choose to expand beyond the matter to that nature we go to the stars. Uh, when you go into the stars, there's no nature there. That's true. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, nature is beautiful and wonderful and all, but, you know, uh, the problem man has created in, in, in this realm here in, in matter in, on Earth is uh, not natural. With concoctions and things, and the, it's not natural what they're doing. And to solve those non-natural conditions that we've put ourselves into with all these obstructions, we can't solve it with the same mind or nature because it didn't come from nature. So we go to the stars to solve these problems. <laughs> yeah, there's just some other little thing. I put these informations out there before. So I have another little question for you then that's related to this. Um, as I understand it, the goal would be to eventually not need to eat food at all, right? For some of us. And, and then what would be the purpose of not eating food at all? Is it to um, raise the vibration of the body or, and what would the purpose be for that? I would say what's the purpose for eating? <laughs> if if you connect to source, not eating, why would you want to eat? Where we came from, we didn't eat, and where we shall return, we won't eat. Right? We were we, everything in the universe works on energy exchange, field, plasma field interaction. Ninety nine point nine nine percent of the universe is made of a plasma, and that's how the universe uh, uh, operates. And uh, all matter is created through these field interactions. Uh, from the higher matter states to the lower, heavier matter states. It's all done through field and drag. Just like I explained how we're right. creating ourselves, it's all done like that. So, you know, if we can come to a point where we've learned that we don't need to eat physical foods no more, how much of a burden are you saving yourself? Just in time and so on and so forth. Uh, it's just some people uh, will want to go that route and some will not. And that's okay. Um, yes. It's, um, everybody's got to come to the conclusion of why for themselves. Um, we're going to be going back to that state eventually when we leave this body. So wouldn't it be beautiful if we can do it before we leave this body and then leave the body at will anytime we want? You know, like you've already experienced it. You said astral travel and so on and so forth. But, you know, I'm talking about uh, traveling the stars at any time with or without your body your choice in this state so what vehicle would you use to travel the astral body or is there another kind of vehicle 
you, this is where I'm, you can use the vehicle of, of travel with your body, body as well, or without it. It's your choice. The soul is the uh, is the essence of who you are. It's not the physical body, and the soul, which is behind our eyes, the gateway, the window to our soul, is actually a small spot. I've shared the uh, MRI of a brain, my brain, <laughs> where you see the soul. Uh, that little dot. Contains the, the power of several Hiroshima bombs. Not but how do you access that that power? This is what we're working <laughs> for, right? And that's the magical qu uh, question that everybody's uh, looking for the answer. Um, so we're moving into that direction, and uh, I feel that humanity is is uh, stepping towards the era of light very quickly especially in the last couple of years or so more and more about breatharianism plasma the prana is coming out more and more and more um i think we'll see it in our lifetime mm -hmm. yes yeah, yeah. i believe you will see it in your lifetime because you will do it with your life mm -hmm. yeah. that is also my goal no yeah, I mean, more and more people will, will, will humanity as as a whole well, let me put the example of the four minute mile uh, when that, what was his name that broke the four minute mile? Once he did it within the week, a few other people did it. Right. It's the same, the hundredth monkey syndrome. Yes. It's, 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 the it started. The energy's there, the information's there, it's, it's happening. Um, just on the board, it happens so often, the same question will be asked two or three times in a row, and, the, and sometimes in the same uh, hour. From different people, the same questions. Yeah. Yes. Because it, that information is out there, and people are picking at it. Mm -hmm. So you know, this information's out there, and people are picking at it. And this is we're just bringing it out to the surface and talking about it. I don't have all the answers, yeah. Yeah. but we're all learning together. But just uh, for example, on the Facebook, you know, they started small, and then with the results, you know, people are inspired. So if, if, if you know, going no food is is doing, um, you know, you know, there's so much improvement for somebody's life, and they're sharing it, and more and more people are going to do it, right? Roger Bannister, yeah, he broke the four-minute mile. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, so just just think so of that barrier, that four-minute mile. That was massive, impossible. A human could run from fast in a four-minute mile, and nobody was able to do it until this guy goes. You guys are all full of shit. Watch. And he did it. Because he, he just was able to connect saying, what they're saying has no reality. Everything's possible, and he did it. And, you know, now regularly, four minute miles, like nothing for, you know, some average runners. Right. <laughs> I heard a prediction by an ex extraterrestrial being um, that um, in 2015, uh, 15, um, 10% of the population is going to be returning. So that's, that's 10%? Yeah. Wow. 2015. Yeah. Okay. Not far off. Yeah, no. So I'm sure we're going to see it, and if not love it, you know, and maybe who knows how long we're going to you know? <laughs> it will be a, a very different world that we will be living in. Peace, balance, and correct conduct. That's what we're moving towards. We have no, we have no alternative. If humanity doesn't go that way, it's going to self-destruct. We have no alternative but to go that way. It's been going on for too long of all this killing and robbery and thievery and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's just ridiculous. Um, the, 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 the main thing, once you live in peace, balance, correct conduct, uh, number one thing is everybody has to have basic essentials and necessities of life. Everybody, equally. Mm. That's, that's, that's the, one of the main things. The people that are running this planet are controlling have, Cause division in the elites, you know, and the poor, and it's, it's ridiculous. Mm. Ridiculous. The only species that pays to live is humanity. No other species pays to live, to survive. Ridiculous. But when are people going to see this? You know, money is used to control us. It's, it's, it's a fictitious thing that we use for exchange, and it has control over us. We're, we're, you know, it's being created out of thin air. We're paying interest on it. Which can never be repaid mathematically. I don't even want to go there anymore. But it's just a ridiculous system, and people are waking up to it more and more each day. 
So it's yes. going to come to a point where the awareness is going to be there. Money. We don't need money. Hey, brother. Hey, sister. What do you need? That's all it is. It's that awareness that snapped humanity out of the darkness. And it's coming. It's just uh, the first, the, the, the best day will be when everybody burns all their money. <laughs> we will know we, we've, we've, we've shifted. So that will be in 2050 once 10% of the population is breatharian. Because if, so, yeah, if 10% is breatharian, then that means that other 90% are, they're not going to still be eating meat. So they're going to be going in that same yeah. direction. Yeah. I, I, it's, 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 it's coming, yeah. The, like the veganism is just growing huge. Uh, it's, it's, it's become more like a fashion because there's no veganism in nature. There's no veganism in the universe. Mm -hmm. It's the, the, the key is moving towards the less is more, meaning uh, you know, yeah, okay, you know, not harming any animals is wonderful and all that, but we're also looking at plants as the same uh, species, uh, same level at the soul level as everything else. So, yeah, we don't want to be, you know, screwing with them as, as well. You know, moving into the eating fruit is a step in the right direction because uh, the tree drops the fruit, it's less karmic than, than, uh, than uh, you know, cutting a basil plant so it can't go to seed. For example, uh, and as long as you don't destroy the seed, uh, you know, you, you toss it, it gets planted, or it goes through us like fig seeds where they don't get digested and it gets carried on. There's, there's very little karma in that experience. Um, so this is uh, what we're talking about um, little by little. So if, when we're cleaning our bodies, we're eating less and less and less, we're um, uh, less affecting other beings. That's what I'm talking about. That's peace, balance, and correct conduct, moving in that direction. And for some of us, maybe we'll go into not eating at all anymore, physical foods, you know, and, and go that road. You know, and uh, when you reach that state, you'll be able to walk around and uh, you won't be able to step on an ant. It'll be impossibility because the creatures will feel your senses and your state and they'll be moving out of the way for you. So they won't get harmed. Oh, wow. The lion will lay with the sheep, the lamb. <laughs> um, these are far-fetched ideas for some, but I see it yeah, clearly. I see it with the internet, you know, you know, many people, I would say the majority of people have no idea what the options are, <clears throat> right? And right. so with the internet, now people have access to information and uh, with people having results online, you know, I'm sure the information is going to, people are going to change fast. Okay. Yes. So I have maybe one last question since we only have a few minutes left. Um, okay. So when you when you say that um, the uh, master fast protocol is you know seven to nine years, that we if we stay committed to the protocol, then what exactly happens after the seven years or the nine years? Is it a complete regeneration of the body, and then there's something else in addition to that? Are we going to rewrite our DNA at some point or because we're born with the DNA that our parents gave us, right? And even if the body is completely regenerated in seven years, we still have that same DNA, or is that also changed? Genetics can be uh, brought back to blueprint, even if you were born with uh, uh, genetics that were not correct. Yeah, you know, epigenetics, from... gene expression. Um, but, uh, you know, that's talking more into physicality. Um, we're going to find out when people have gone seven to nine years, haven't we? I, I, I removed the seven years, I put nine, but you know, once you're in this lifestyle for a few years, um, there's, no, there's no turning back. Um, why would somebody want to go back? I have no idea. There's some that do, they've come on the page, they've went extreme, trying to be a hero, never hear from them anymore. Um, and that's not what we're about. We, from the day one, you know, we thought of this is a lifestyle. So, um, we, you know, we have people on their second, third, fourth, Fifth, sixth, master fast, whether it's short, long, mix of them all, hybrids. We have people, are, are, you know, figuring it out. This is what we need to do. We, we, we can't go back to eating seven days a week. So, it, it, you know, we're seeing what's happening. With the, you know, people are transforming. And it's just going to happen more and more. When I went on to raw foods, you know, I was fasting. I've been fasting for 27 years. And the, and the fast were always my resets. I... I I had, I had that sense. Every season change, I had to do a fast. 
I just had to. My body says, okay, I'm ready. It was, I was looking forward to those season changes. It wasn't dry fasting before uh, it started dry fasting. It was just, you know, different types of juice fasting and so on and so forth that I played with. But um, it was always my resets. And bang, you know, seven to, seven to two weeks was my usual. And then I'd be throwing a long one, 30, 50, 60 days or whatever occasionally. But um, every time you would do those, you know, rejuvenation, rejuvenation, in just that short time. So that was my, the thing that kept me um, on a different path than most people in raw food. Um, you know, people are always talking about eating. I was talking about when are you fat, when's your next fat? <laughs> 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 and, uh, and that was the beauty. So um, regeneration, things, uh, miraculous things happen and are happening and we've seen and, and more things are going to happen that we haven't seen yet. You know, we got people that uh, paralyzed that are, you know, regenerating. We got people uh, with all kinds of stuff. Like, it's just, there's just so much that's been happening. All little miracles that some people that have went through it don't even notice a miracle. Like, you know, uh, preparing yourself for a bowel surgery and your bowel is completely healed after 108 days. Yes. You know, stuff like that. And these, these are miracles. You yeah, know? I I've had plenty of little things that have happened for me that it's kind of hard to remember at you know at the <laughs> moment. Like I just remembered that I have to not use my glasses anymore because they don't work anymore. My uh, prescription has obviously changed, but I don't want to get new glasses again because they're going to continue to change. Yeah. So I I'm kind of in this weird in between space where I can't see uh, 2020 with my eyes yet, but the glasses are not good anymore. Yeah, get yourself a pair of these. What are those? Oh, what is that? Pinhole, pinhole glasses and do the eye exercises. You see? Oh, yeah? yeah? Okay. Do I do the eye exercise? I made a video on eye exercises. Other people have made videos on eye exercises. Um, use the herbal uh, tinctures for the eyes. Just work with your eyes. Take care of them. Uh, you know, massage them with the uh, burnt stick. Be careful. Yeah. You know, but go as hard as you comfortably can. Dig into it. Just, yeah. We need to move things around, just like we're massaging the kidneys. These things, they work. Hot and cold showers, one yeah. yeah. cold shower. Yeah. yeah, we need to get things moving. Even uh, castor oil packs in the ears, you know, half dropper of uh, warm castor oil. Make sure it's not hot. <laughs> Test it on your elbow. Fill it up your ear, put cotton in it, go to sleep. Do that every night. That helps draw. Castor oil packs work great. You can use them anywhere. There's so much stuff we can do. There's actually, no, I think put them in your eyes, castor oil, one, one to three drops a night, I believe. Castor oil. I've never tried it, but uh, there's people who have done that. Mm, but you, there's the tincture as well. Yeah, the tinctures. There's so yeah, much stuff we can do. very powerful. So much. Um, I destroyed my eyesight through high fat. I had the perfect vision before. <clears throat> I destroyed it. But uh, the reason I destroyed myself so much, because I came from such a pretty good, very clean body, and then I went into that. Whereas people coming from a sad diet go into a high fat raw vegan diet, they're gonna feel great. You know, for me, it was detrimental, it almost killed me. Lost a friend doing that on um, this ketogenic stuff. So, um, you know, it's just an understanding of what happened. You know, I, I had to go through it for the purpose of gaining the wisdom and understanding of what happened. Uh, just like uh, my first 40 day fast with Concord grape juice, I ended up in bed for two years. And it was, uh, it's, it's, now is the understanding, back then it wasn't, it wasn't fun. So, you know, we learn, we learn. And uh, so, we can. You know, I just want to thank you so much for all the work that you do and for bringing this healing system to us, to our knowledge, to our awareness. Because you know, for, for me, it has completely changed my life. And I know for many other people also. Um, so I don't think there's any way that we could ever repay you for yeah. this is very what you shared with us. You repaid a million times over. You know, this is uh, I'm just a messenger. Just a messenger. All this information is available to everybody. Just the way it came through me, everybody has the access to it. You know, I've I'm 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 seeing a lot of stuff on in, in other groups that came through from Masterfast being out there. A lot of stuff. Um, you know, the dry fasting, we've opened it up like never, you know, it's never, it was hardly nothing on there. We know we cracked the kidney filtration code. We brought a lot of new stuff. 
stop drinking water. You know, we, we're making these things known and putting it out there um, to bring the changes. Um, you know, you being in our club, you have the advantages. <laughs> yes, it's definitely an advantage. <laughs> but uh, it's just beautiful what you've shared, and it's amazing. And uh, this You're is doing really well. You're this doing is really well. yeah. I I, I I keep trying to share the information that in sharing, just on the board and on these calls and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. You're just opening up your plasma to allow yourself to receive. There's people that come through their through our, our club, take, leave, and we don't hear from them. And there's more that I've done 108 days that we that we don't know about out there. A All lot. Right. More. And what they don't understand is they're not doing themselves any good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really nice to share because you would receive the feedback. It all, it only strengthens you by allowing you to receive. You can't receive until you give. And this is giving. This is amazing. We all, we're all giving on the page, helping each other, supporting each other. You're inspiring many people with this video. <clears throat> many people who are going to watch in the next few days and in the future. Um, it's, it's beautiful, yeah. Keep us posted on the board, you know. Okay. Um, we can always do a future, another interviews, you know, another year, whatever, six months, as you feel things have changed, whatever. We want to hear, people need to hear what's going on because we, it's master fast system is relatively very new. It's a baby. It is it's still growing, but um, the few people that have that are on their second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth master fast, they have the understanding. Okay, you know I'm gonna keep going because mm -hmm. <laughs> the understanding's starting to, to grow with them through the experience. There's no other way it's gonna happen. We can read and watch, like I said before, other people and go to school. And it's 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 not part of you until you've done it. I'm sure you can agree with that. <laughs> I agree 100. percent Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a whole different thing when we experience. Um, one master fast has more knowledge than all the PhDs on this planet. Yes. And then you realize that you are just beginning. And so then that's why you can never go back. Yeah. We hope that people choose not to go back because I don't know what's the point of going back to uh, where you came from. Because a lot of people come from pain, suffering, and misery. And uh, it's not fun. Adrian, how do you, self, uh, how do you see yourself um, in the next few years? In the next few years. Mm -hmm. um, so I really believe that after three years of dedication to the Master Fast, that I could probably have my youthful body back again, meaning when I was like maybe 21 years old and uh, everything was still very supple and hydrated. And um, uh, like I said, what I want is to be able to do the yoga, the yoga like I was doing when I was that age. Uh, so I fully expect that to happen because I see myself going in that direction again. Your wish and, is your command. Yes. And, and um, like I said, people who have not known me for very long, but in the very short period of time that they've known me, they have seen a very uh, big difference. Uh, so, you know, in two months, if there's such a big difference, then I can see in two more years that there would be a, a, a you know, enormous difference. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. And then, and then after three years, you're going to decide what's best for you. <laughs> right? Yeah, my, you know, my goal is the same as yours. You know, I, I do see myself eventually, especially in seven or nine years, that I won't need to eat anymore, for mm -hmm. sure. But I think it might happen before that. And um, uh, my purpose in wanting to do that is to raise the vibration of all my bodies, physical, spiritual, uh, and mm -hmm. mental, uh, so that mm -hmm. I can be prepared for whatever the next step is for us, you know, for us as human beings. Mm -hmm. um, like you say, going to the stars, whatever that means specifically, it's hard to know exactly, but yes. Um, another level. And, uh, yeah, definitely another level from this three-dimensional level. Yeah, I, I definitely know that that's where I'll be probably in nine years. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, do we have some more questions here? 
So move on. So in one year period, we do one hundred and eight day mass fasting for the amount of days on one of the programs like the hybrid and then another hundred and eight days mass fast. Yes. Thank you all for the lovely refresh session. I've learned so much. Blessings, okay. Yeah, well, you know, this, it's infinite way you, how you can interchange and make MasterPass work for you. We have a lot of tools, a lot of different options. You can mix and match. Make it, make it work. Keep it part of your life. And uh, don't look back. Just, uh, you know, it, it'll be a, a frog in the distant uh, past where, where we came from, where we've learned. Uh, but uh, we never have to go back to that. Never. Um, you're, uh, you'll, you'll see, uh, you know, in just a short time, you've seen how much improvement. So just imagine how the body's going to be opening up more and more and more. It's, it's really, really challenging for some of us to comprehend how much it takes to clean this physical body. It's, it's not conceivable for most people. They just don't have an idea. Um, it took me on raw food, some fasting, a good five years to clean up all the mucus I had. I was constantly, <clears throat> you know, a good five years. And, um, you know, it's, uh, everything just gets better and better and better. You know, I, I did the nine, over nine years, well over nine years, 100% raw. Um, it was a great experience. Uh, I was doing mostly fruits, you know, a lot of sprouts that I grew myself. Some greens, uh, uh, you know, the summer from the garden, and uh, some of the purchase. Uh, uh, I did uh, uh, not many nuts and seeds at those times, but uh, uh, herbs, some herbs. I didn't do a lot of herbs back then. <clears throat> but I, uh, I achieved very, very, uh, very high level of uh, health, you would, you would say. Uh, you know, I was losing my hair when I started and it was going gray, and it all reversed, and it grew. I, I showed the pictures. You know, I destroyed myself uh, doing more experiments, trying to put myself further, where it's the absolute opposite for me. <laughs> Completely destroyed myself. What a blessing that was to uh, to really get an understanding. Um, yet, um, so um, we just take it one day at a time and um, move towards our goals and keep it that as our drive and our focus. <clears throat> what else are we going to do? What else are we going to do? Eat? Work. <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing that for how many years? You know, how much more do we want to eat? How much more pleasure shopping can we get out of eating? Seriously, he's done it all. Yeah. Yeah, I've had my fill. <laughs> well, we can enjoy it here and there. No, no big deal. No big deal. But less and less and less. As yes. we clean, we'll, we, we will get more enjoyment out of not eating than we will of eating. That's what's going to start happening, folks. Yeah. We'll get, yeah. That's it, exactly. It's, you know, it's, for me, it's, it's, that's where I'm at. I'm, you know, why did I eat again? <laughs> and you kind of start to find, <laughs> but, not for You know, not, not ready to let it go yet, but it's, I, I'm coming right. to the point where, you know, eating fruits and everything, you know, it's not doing for me. Mm -hmm. It's not just, it's just not doing it for me. Um, so it's, but I've been working out of years and, uh, years to go, whatever, it doesn't matter. Enjoy the moment. Celebrate, Ooh. wonderful. Uh, so if we have any more questions or, uh, we can, uh, Anybody? call it a close for tonight and, uh, wonderful sharing your <laughs> time with us. Awesome, awesome. Amazing experience and, uh, people will see you on the board, I guess. Yes. Nothing else? Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Yeah. All right, folks. So we'll uh, bring the, this uh, Saturday Night Live Zoom to another close. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see some of you maybe on Wednesday where we do the Facebook uh, nice. live on uh, 3 6 p.m. Toronto time. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. For being a guest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody pop in. Thank you. Yeah, pl plasma love to you all. Plasma love. Keep it flowing. Plasma love to you. Let's Thank just you. keep that flowing.
Yes. We can tap into it anytime we choose. It's always there, always flowing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes we forget, you know, and okay, we get on. Oh, yeah, okay, let's tap back into it. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, see you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Ciao. Bye, everyone. Bye.